Good afternoon everyone. My name is Jared and this is my channel Monster B3K. In this video we're going to be doing a couple of different things. We're going to be adding a tachometer to the instrument cluster by swapping in a cluster from a 97F150. And we are going to be replacing the somewhat flaky headlight switch all at the same time. And we will be addressing the uh, odometer not working issue that often plagues the 9798 uh, F-series and E-series vehicles. Without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so the other day I was driving my kids to the bus stop and I realized the tripometer and the odometer were not moving. Hmm. wonder how long that's been going on. Did some research. It is a common issue with the 1997-1998 Ford E-Series, F-Series, and on some other Ford products that had uh, mechanical speedometers. You can't see it here, but there is a little gear, there's a motor with a gear attached to it that is behind the cluster, which controls the tripometer and the odometer. And what will happen is that plastic gear wears out and it breaks. And then the motor can't turn these numbers anymore and then you become illegal because your vehicle is not tracking mileage anymore. So today we're going to work on that and at the same time uh, here is your headlight switch and while this part of it works the pull it out get your lights part the turn it and so your interior lights come on or you can control the you can see how it's, it's wobbling there uh, control the intensity of your lights, that part's not working. It's kind of flaky, so I went ahead and purchased a new one. So we're going to work on both of these issues and uh, get down to it. So this is not probably required, but at least this is a StarCraft converted E150 that we're in, my 97 E150. Um, so it's going to be a little bit different in some ways than a standard E-series e vehicle, but it's still functionally the same. There's a decorative plate that goes here. I took it off because you need to to get the doghouse out. I've left it off. It's going to make your life a little bit easier here. I don't think you necessarily need to remove it unless you want to. Anyway, it's already out. The very first thing we need to do is to get this out of the way. We cannot remove this panel until this is out of the way. There's two ways you can do it. If you're replacing the headlight switch, you need to remove both the, the knob and the shaft that the knob's on because your new switch will not come with that. And to do that, there is a button that is hidden on the switch. It's kind of buried up in here that you got to press down on and pull the knob out at the same time. You'll get the knob and the shaft out as one piece. Um, if you're only needing to pull this panel and you don't want to do that. You can also if you pull this back, um, ignore the dinger. Here, we'll do that. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, basically there's a metal tab inside of this knob and if you can get some tooling up in there, you can press the tab and you'll be able to slide the knob off. Personally, I would rather take the knob and the shaft out at the same time. So we're gonna do that. Let me get my tripod so I can get both my hands free and we'll get started on that. All right, so not a ton to see here because I'll have to show you on the switch module once I take it out, but you're gonna wanna reach in, push down on that switch, and this is supposed to come out. It's not wanting to give me any love here. And I'm probably gonna disconnect, oh, there it goes. But this is what happens if you don't disconnect the battery, so. Let me go disconnect the battery so we don't have to listen to that the whole time and I'll be right back. Okay, next thing that's up is there are two T20s. There's one of them. And they're kind of, you can see them just, you can see the holes here. They're located in the kind of the top around the center of the plastic piece in front of the instrument cluster. There are two T20 Torx in there. If you use a screwdriver, you can get them out. Another thing you can do is if you have socket style um, torques like I do, just 
put them on a one quarter driver and get them out pretty easy. But we need to get that out. And once we get that out, we can actually lift. In my case, it's got this fake wood on it, but uh, we can lift this whole piece out. That's why this had to come out. So you could pull the whole shebang. All right, this part's going to feel scary, but it's not scary. Um, all of this, this particular plastic piece, is held in by a couple of push clips. So get a tool like a cat's claw, like a trim removal tool, and kind of get in under this, and then just pop it out. There's going to be a couple scattered around. So if it's fighting you pretty hard, try to kind of work your way around and pull, pull evenly so you don't wind up snapping something. But if your plastic's in decent shape, it should just kind of come out. And once it does, we'll have access not only to the instrument cluster, but we're going to have access to the headlight switch that's back here. One thing I forgot to mention is it'll be handy if you put yourself down in first gear when you do this, so you have some extra clearance to help slide this out. So you can see I've gotten it to pop loose around most of the perimeter, except for down here. Uh, from what I can see, I don't think this needs to come off I'm gonna look at this real close to see if for some reason it's screwed in there and I'll get back with you guys okay at least in my circumstance this was actually threaded in the uh, part looks like this um, as you can see it has threads on the inside there so what I did to avoid marking this up is I took I used some locking pliers, but I, I wrapped the jaws in a paper towel so I wouldn't mark it up, and it wasn't in real tight. But now this is out of the way, we should be able to pop this off without a major issue here. Yep, there it goes. That was what was holding it. Just like that. Nice. Alright, so couple things going on here. We'll go ahead and focus on the headlight switch since we're down to kind of like the last thing for it. Oh, did I snap one? Oh. I bet somebody had been in here before. Yeah. Those two were snapped. Actually, we got three that were snapped. One, two, three. And when that happens, you got a couple of choices. Uh, yeah. So you can try using super glue. Um, that sometimes works. You can try using a heavier glue. That sometimes works. But generally, once these things snap, they don't really like going back in. I'll try some super glue. You can't really clamp it because of how these are shaped, so you just kind of stick it on there and hope for the best. The biggest issue is trying to line them up with how they broke. That gets really annoying. So we have one, two, is it just two? Or did we lose one over here? Uh, just two? Yeah, okay, just two. I might just roll it if it's just two. Anyway, we need to loosen this up, eyeballing it. That's maybe a 12 or a 13 millimeter. You get it with a deep well socket. And once you do that, the headlight switch itself will be loose and it'll dangle down around here and we can remove the connector. So don't listen to me for size guesstimations. It turns out this was a 16. So yeah. Just unscrew it and the switch should just kind of go doink just like that. Don't lose the part. I'm not sure if that one comes with the new switch or not. There we have it. There's your headlight switch. It has an absolutely enormous connector attached to it. And what I've read is sometimes this connector gives up the ghost, and you can buy a pigtail for that if you need to. But yeah, this guy is kind of worn out. Mmm, look at that green crusty right there. Yeah, she's kind of toasted. Alright, you're going to want to use a jeweler's screwdriver. Kind of slip under this, or maybe even a pry bar. I've, I've kind of started digging my baby pry bar. Um, get under both sides, kind of wiggle this thing off. 
and then grab your new switch you're going to want to stare and compare and everything looks good snap it back together and then you put it back together okay here is our side by side our original motocraft switch is on the left our brand new duralast switch is on the right it is a if i can get you a part here we go it is a sw271 and when we stare and compare it it looks looks about right so uh this is our our doodle flopper oh that's the button i forgot to mention a few clips ago that's what you got to press to get the shaft to release right there press it down away she goes all right so we'll get this out of the way and we're gonna plug it back into the connector we'll get it routed back up in position we'll screw that little well, I'll just call it a little connector piece that holds it to uh, this metal plate here and start putting it all back together with exception of putting the, the knob and shaft back in because we need to leave that out until we put that guy back in. Okay, switch is in position. Uh, remember, that's a 16 millimeter to put that back in. i um, not sure if that flat is going to matter or not. Uh, looking at this, I don't think it will. I don't see it. Should be that this will just kind of screw back in. Yeah. Once we put the thing back on. You know, it just occurred to me. I probably put that in backwards. The longer side probably needs to stick out yeah so there's this thing has two different lengths on it on either side of the nut i think the longer side needs to stick out this way because it's got to provide some threading beyond the panel that goes on there i'm not sure if that'll work i will dig into that but for the cluster we have one, two, thank you, three, and four. I'm going to call those seven millimeters that need to come out. And once they come out, the cluster's loose, but you got to pay attention to two things. Uh, thing number one is that your gear indicator is not part of the cluster. It kind of snaps in, so you'll need to take care to pop that out. Um, my case is going to be a little bit different. We'll get to that. Uh, thing number two is there's going to be three big ribbon cables, kind of dun, 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 that go across the back that we need to take out. So when you go to pull this out, don't just <laughs> don't rip it. You'll damage something. Pull it out gentle light, kind of get to one side, and then start pulling cables. All right, so this is what we look like once the cluster is out. Now, in my case, the cluster gave me a little bit of a surprise. The, the plastic had separated from the cluster itself. It's supposed to be held in. At the, there's two tabs, one here and one there. They're supposed to hold it together. That popped loose. If that happens to you, do everything you can not to touch the black part where the gauges actually are because your fingerprints will stick there forever and ever. And it will always remind you when you look at your cluster. So on the back, whoops, we've got, if you've never seen this, this is what's called a printed circuit board. It's thin, it's ribbony, it's papery, it is delicate, it will tear. Be nice to it. Um, at this point, this is where our paths are going to diverge a little, depending on what you're trying to do. If your goal is to just swap a cluster, then at this point you grab the new compatible cluster, reconnect those three plugs that run across the top, put it all back together, you're done. And I do actually have another cluster over there. 
if your goal is to fix the odometer problem, you still got to keep going. Um, I'm going to check my new cluster and check how its gear is and replace that gear, actually. But I'll probably open this one up to verify the failure in the practice. So to get to the next step where we actually open this up so that we can see, um, get to the motor, because the motor for the odometer is behind this. There are a number of small torques that need to come out. So you got one here, and then here, and we're moving our way across the board left to right. Here, 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 and there. Um, I don't believe you need to go into any of the recessed holes, like uh, here and here and here. Be careful of these resistors. You snap that off, something's going to break. Uh, the most delicate part of all this is you've got to disconnect this ribbon connection. And how this works is there should be, I need to get my light on it so I can see it precisely, but how these ribbon cables are normally held in is there's a lock attached to the connector and you got to pop the lock out and then the ribbon will come right out. But if you try to pull it as is right now, you'll just tear it. And then your SOL, because as far as I know, you cannot get this printed circuit board as an individual part. You have to go get a cluster. So get a light in here so you can find those clips to pop out. Pop them out. Then you can pull this. Take out all your screws. And then this whole, uh, this back piece should lift up and expose our odometer motor, which should. All right. Here we are. So what I did here is this piece is glued to the, the black plastic of your cluster and your lens. So what you have to do is go back to these tabs that are up here. You got one, two, and then you have two down here, three and four. And you got to pop those loose. And when you do that, you can lift this white piece with the printed circuit board and everything out of the way. All right, we are now eyes on the prize. So here is our motor right here, and it needs to twist out. But in order to twist it out, there is, see that piece of plastic there? Let's see if I can get a better zoom on that. It'll behave. Come on, potato camera. There we go. If you can look, there's actually a metal tab under that plastic. So when you go to turn to the right to pop this out, you need to bend that tab down ever so slightly to get it clear of this plastic retainer. And it'll just pop over. And then we can lift this motor and verify if indeed the problem here was that the worm gear has failed. There you have it, folks. That is one broken worm gear. So failure verified. So if I was going to use this cluster again, I would probably take some alcohol, some isopropyl. I'm going to guess that started out its life as some grease, but I'd clean all the corrosion up. I'd clean the grease up. I would lightly uh, re-grease right there clean out all the bits of this gear and then uh, we would press new gear on it is pressed on it's a press fit you can do it with your hand strength um, don't go all the way down though you want to stop a couple of business cards width up so I don't know like a millimeter or so I'm not sure what that would be in inches maybe like a sixteenth or something um, but that's good. So we have a verified failure. So with that, in case I don't intend to use this cluster, uh, I intend to use that cluster because it has a tachometer in it that should just work. So at this point, um, I'm just gonna, I'll clean the gear out, but I'm gonna put this back in. I'm gonna put all this back together. This was practice so that I could figure out how to do this on the cluster that mattered 
without breaking anything. Now I know how to do it. So I'm going to put all this back together and I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to crack open the cluster we're actually going to reinstall. And I'll bring you back when I get to this point because I am going to swap the gear regardless if it's good or bad because I know these things blow out. Alrighty, here is the new cluster. And you may be thinking, why are you changing clusters when all you need to do is replace the gear? Well, I don't care about the mileage because I don't know how long this thing drove with a busted gear, so I don't care about that. Um, I'll just make sure that if I ever sell this, I put on the title mileage not correct. Um, this is why. This has a tachometer. And if you're any kind of a gearhead like me, a tachometer can tell you a lot about what your engine's up to. And it's just really nice to have one readily available where you don't have to use a scan tool or some other method to figure out what the engine RPM is. It's just nice to have. So this is already going to have the appropriate wiring for it, but for whatever reason, they chose on the E-Series vehicles not to include one. Don't know why, but that's what they did. So this one's from a truck. It actually looks just like the one that's in my 2001 F-250. Uh, your gauge cluster over here, speedometer here, tack there. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and get in there, uh, verify. Well, let's kind of see where the worm gear is. I suspect that it's, it's in sad shape which is why I do have a Dorman replacement part, which is this fella here. Little tiny guy. It is a 926-321 Dorman. And we'll go ahead and replace it, just so I don't have to worry about it for 150,000 miles or whatever. Um, one other thing I'm going to do, I'll do it off camera. In case unless somebody's interested, I can do a little tutorial on it. I'm going to test bulbs. I know that the bulk of my bulbs on my old cluster do work, but some may be burned out, and I don't know. And I have no clue about the status of the bulbs on this guy. So, I'm going to mainly transfer them over, because in theory, that's a lower mileage cluster than this one, assuming this is correct. I'm assuming that's correct-ish. So anyway, I'm going to do that off-camera. Just so I don't bore you guys to tears. I've got a little test battery I use, and I just check the light, put 12 volts on it, and if it lights up, yay! If it doesn't, boo. And I'll go get replacements. Anyway, onward. Alright, so this F-150 cluster is a bit more of a trickster. Um, instead of having just little push tabs to separate things with, it uses some more of the T-15 Torx. And then it, the whole thing falls to pieces, so you got to be really careful when you're taking it apart. Anyway, this one had the same failure. There's the remains of the worm gear. There's the remains that are jammed in there. I'm happy to see that that copper corrosion is not there. It looks like all I'll need to do is just uh, swap it out and then rebuild everything. But you can see it totally fell to pieces. So... If you got a 9798 Ford... This will happen to you. So it's good to know how to do this. Okay, I cleaned out the old. Here is the new. I've pressed it on by hand. I'm going to start with that gap. If it works, fantastic. I'll leave it be. If it's not working the way I want it to, I can come back and push it in a little further. But it's a lot easier to push this on than it would be to pull it off. And I also have concerns if I get into a tug of war that I will break this shaft. And then... Then I'm hurting because then I got to get a new motor and I don't want to do that. So I've gotten most of the junk out. Uh, I think while it was churning and breaking, it snapped a little piece of plastic off in there. I cleaned that out. Um, time to put it all back together. And uh, then we'll I'll bring you back when we actually get back to the part of installing our cluster. All right, here we are back together. Remember, we have one, two, three, four, five, six of these T15s on the back. And then if you've somehow come across my video and you got an F-Series vehicle, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. P15s across the front. But we are back together. Don't forget uh, the ribbing cable up here. After you'd pop the tabs, and the tabs are just right there at the top. You can hook them with your finger. Uh, keep Make sure those are loose. Push your cable back in gently. And then push these back in either side. And you're good to go. So this is fully rebuilt. And now the next step for me, like I said, is I got to test some bulbs. Because with knowing that this uh, odometer gear was completely destroyed... I bet I got some burned out bulbs too, if I just stuck with these bulbs. So, time to uh, get working on that, I suppose. And we'll come back when I'm actually putting everything back together. Putting the cluster back in, the trim back on, and then our actual testing. Uh, I can test the tachometer, turn it on, you know, rev it. So... I guess that's what we'll do there. Okay, pro tip. I found to get the gear indicator back in, it actually was a whole lot easier to pop the front casing off. And for the E-Series, since it's just those four push clips, it's really easy to do. Just remember, if you've got the glass, or the, the casing off, try not to touch the instrument felt, or whatever you want to call that plastic piece, because you'll get finger grease on there. And then I imagine it's going to be hard to get back off. So I just found that work for me. And another thing you could do if you wanted to is trace to the other end of this cable. There's a barrel adjuster and then I think there's a hook. And if you unhook it from that, you know, then you don't have to fight with this. And it just pops in and then you put that back in. But that's up to you. Alrighty, so when you go to put this trim piece back on... It should just kind of drop into place. You still want to have your shifter down in first. That makes life a lot easier. If you have tilt steering, tilt the wheel down. Um, one thing I ran afoul of, but caught in time, is there is a guide pin kind of down over here. And there's another guide pin down over here. They don't want to pop into their little holes because this plastic bends out at the bottom. So you got to tuck that up a little bit to get it to guide in. Once you do, this drops right into place, pop, pop, pop. And now that uh, that collar piece, I'm gonna slide that in there, screw it in, and then reinsert the, uh, the knob and shaft, and then that'll finish our work with the headlight switch. And I cannot test, I, mean, I can test the lights, which I already did, but I cannot test the odometer at this very moment because I need to do the front brakes. After I finish with the front brakes, then I can test the odometer and see if that's working. So we won't have a satisfying conclusion to this video for maybe about a week or so until I get everything in to get the front rebuilt because i got to replace the wheel speed sensors as well. But we take care of that. That at least takes care of our headlight switch. And that we can okay so we got the collar back in and then i think somebody had been working in here before because uh this pull pull shaft is bent it's not as bent now i just straightened it out a bit on my vice but it definitely absolutely was bent so i'm gonna kind of push that back in and you can see that's the reason why it was wobbly like that because it was bent All right, let's test it out. So let me get the door closed. And then that takes care of our backlight. So if this is working right, when I turn the knob all the way to the left past the switch, that should have lit up. And when I tested this earlier, it was. So now I am sad. Because it is not. Got its key in. Oh, you know what? I'm a dumb dumb. I let the battery unplug. Let me go plug the battery back in and we'll try this again. All right, let's try this again now that I have the battery connected. So when we turn this to all the way to the on position, the interior light should turn on. 
And sure enough, they do. It's kind of a mushy click, but it works. Because now, this works. And when I turn the lights on, let me kill the flashlight here. So before, when I would do this, I'd start messing with the dimmer. It would cut off completely, and I'd have to kind of wiggle it to fix it. But now, if I want to dim it, it works. Now we got full headlight. And even the full headlight position, we can go full dim. We can bring it back. Works great. And I also took the time to, I, I think I had like three or four burnt out bulbs. So I took care of that. So all of this looks really good. So all that looks good. And at this point, I'm pretty much done with everything I can do tonight. There's one last thing to do, which is to put these uh, two Torx screws back in. And once you put those Torx screws back in, back in you're done. Um, like I said, I will wrap this video up after I finish the front brakes, which will be another video, and install the wheel speed sensors, which will be another video. Oh boy. Um, once all that is done, uh, we'll take this thing for a drive and make sure the odometer works, because it should now. The gear had failed, a new one's in, and unless I need to adjust the gear, or that little motor is bad, which apparently those motors almost never go bad. It's almost always the gear. Yeah, we'll see. We're going to find out. I have a spare motor, and if i got to go to the junkyard and get a couple of motors at, out of clusters, I can do that too. One way or another, we will test it. I'm rambling. Later, y'all. Good news, everyone. As you can see, the tripometer advanced i did uh to the end of my private road network and back that's about four miles it clocked about four miles so the repair was a success the uh, motor swap was a success so i will call this a good repair all right guys that's going to do it today for our odometer repair in the instrument cluster of my 1997 ford e150 econoline if you found this video entertaining, if it helped you learn something, please consider like, share, and subscribing. That helps the channel grow, lets me bring more content to you like this. Also, please leave a comment. I like to read them, I like to reply to them, and I like to learn from them. And remember guys, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. I'll catch you guys next episode.